This program is dedicated to the men and women working to improve health and safety in our nation's mining industry. I remember when I first went underground, <clears throat> they put the light on me and took me underground and got down there and the guy said, turn your light off, Mary Lou, and I turned off my light. And if you've never been underground with all the lights off, you cannot comprehend the darkness. You just can't even imagine. And I remember when I turned my light back on, I was like a hyperactive kid. And I was looking around trying to take everything in. And it was that way in the beginning. It was like you couldn't see enough because all there was of your world was where the spot shone. But after you're there a while and you get comfortable in your environment, then you begin to take it for granted, you know? And, and suddenly it was like there was no other, nothing else in my world but where my light was. And I think that's what happens to most employees. They get so comfortable and so at ease at what they're doing, they forget about safety and, and they haven't had an accident. It hasn't happened to them, so they can take shortcuts. They can cut corners and they can get away with it. Instead of an army brat, I'm a miner's brat. I was born and raised in mining. and uh, I grew up in northern Idaho, the Silver Valley, silver capital of the world. Mm -hmm. um, I went to work in the mines there. I've traveled all over the northwest working in underground mines mainly, although I worked in some surface mines. I understand your uh, your father was a miner. Too. He, my father was a miner. He worked all over. He was what they call a tramp miner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and there was eight of us kids, and he drug us all over. Um, my only recollection of my father, he died when I was fifteen. He was fifty four, and Clyde he died the oldest man I ever seen. Still to this day, uh, and I, fifty four I now know is not an old man. It isn't. But he was so old when he died. Um, all I remember of him is he had an oxygen bottle that we kept at home and coughing and spitting up blood. And um, as a 15-year-old, I had a 17-year-old sister, and, and we'd have to bathe him and take care of him because my mother had to work. And when he died, the youngest daughter in the house, there was five girls left at home, and the youngest daughter was 18 months old. My dad mm. died. She's never, she never knew who he was at all. Had no recollection of him. And my only recollection of him was a sick person that, you know, he was a long time dying. It didn't come easy. It was a miserable death. It's something to watch your father spit up blood and, and again, as a 15-year-old, I knew he was sick, but, but at that time, you didn't know what silicosis was. You heard a word and it had no meaning to you. Um, I think it's important anybody working in this industry know what silicosis is. You know, each one of us needs to take some time and to find out about it, to make ourselves knowledgeable on it because there's no coming back from it. There's no reversing it. I was working in Northern California at a little gold mine, the best and worst of all places I ever worked. Uh, my best friend was the manager, and um, actually we had been up in Oregon together at an underground mine there, and an MSHA inspector come in and asked me about going to work for the agency, and, and I told Henry that, and he says, hey, here and he filled out a piece of paper and he says here's your raise and a little more benefits <laughs> and I went oh okay I'll stay <laughs> so now I'm down in California and working for Henry and Emsha comes in and the inspector says hey you ought to think about going to work for the agency and I know nah, I don't think so I, they've talked to me before and this was a real persuasive inspector he kept talking he kept talking so Finally, the only way I thought I was ever going to hush him up was to tell him to give me the uh, application. So he did, and uh, yeah, I, I don't know, I just got to thinking about the industry, about the people I loved. 
I personally think that miners are absolutely the best people in all of the world. They just are. And I got to thinking about it, and I thought, well, it won't hurt. I'll put my paperwork in. And it had to be postmarked August 31st of that year. And August 31st, nervous, I took it up to the post office, certified it, and mailed it off. And Henry come down that afternoon, and he, he was always a hyper-type person, and he loved mining. He just had such a love of mining. And he come down, and, he, and I was kind of nervous. He says, what's wrong? What's wrong? And I said, I sent off the application to MSHA today, and he just stopped and looked at me. He came across the room and gave me a hug, and he says, the time is right, girl. You know what, Clyde? The time was right. Henry was dead the following Monday night. He got killed underground. And every time I ask myself, am I in the right place, I hear Henry. And the time was right. It was right. I try to tell the older miners, especially, they have a real responsibility because just like us raising our kids, it's not what we tell our kids that they learn. It's the example that they see us mm -hmm. living by. Well, it's the same thing. If you have a man with 20, 30 years of experience and he thinks because he's been there and never been hurt, well, he can cut corners. He can, he can do things and get away with it. Well, the younger guys coming in are watching him, and he's just setting an example. Man, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. I also, one of the things that we're really looking at right now is the age bracket. And it's sad to say we're seeing the majority of our fatalities in people our age. Why? Mm -hmm. We've been there, we're so comfortable, we know our jobs so well, nobody else is going to tell us how to do it. You know, we just, it isn't going to happen again, but when none of us likes to admit we are a little older, we are a little slower. Most of us even a little heavier. <laughs> Our minds, well, I'll tell you, my mind's is sharp, but it really isn't. We don't react as quickly as we did. So those are, you know, those are the kind of things that it's an individual responsibility that each person has to think about every day when they're out here doing that job. And it's tough. It's tough to get through to people to have them really take that accountability for what they're doing. And I always, when I'm talking to people, I always ask them to be their brother's keeper, to look out for somebody, and, and they see something, point it out to them. Uh, I also ask, because we all have pride, if somebody points something out to you that they don't feel is necessarily safe, don't take offense to it, but kind of step back and take a deep breath, think about it, Maybe they're going to save your life by pointing something out. I understand your brother uh, died in the mines, too. Yes, he did, Clyde. He fell down the shaft in 1974. Uh, he was 39 years old. He was a shaft repairman. And it was tough. It was hard. Um, it was a Saturday. It wasn't a scheduled work day. They asked him to come out. and had some family friends coming and he really didn't want to work that day but you know he was one of those guys that couldn't pass up the overtime and just be an ask in general so he went ahead and went to work and he had been told when if they completed the task that day he could go home well they'd built a staging uh, <clears throat> with 3 by 12s over the uh, original shaft timbers and they had been working off of them all morning they went up and took lunch and went back down after lunch and the top lander sent him down some caps. The caps are 12 by 12 and uh, he was the tallest, the largest man there. So when they would lower him down, he would set the cap up on his shoulder and then push it up into place and his helper then would block it in. Um, well, they lowered that cap and he put it on his shoulder and he stepped from one compartment over into the other. And all we can assume is that the additional weight, it uh, 
caused the staging to give way and he fell down the shaft. You know, working mm -hmm. in the same valley and I used to, you traveling up and down the shaft in the skip with the guys, you know, they always talk about, well, you heard about so-and-so or you heard about this. And oftentimes someone would say, oh, you heard about the guy that fell down the shaft and you just kind of inside you'd kind of tighten up, maybe die a little. And if they got too graphic, you'd have to say, that was my brother, you know. But uh, it happens so quickly. We never know who and when. Uh, I had a, a friend that was just killed recently. Same thing, same shaft. He knew my brother. I would have told you it never, ever could have happened. But it did. He uh, became too comfortable. He lost respect for an open shaft. He, he knew his job so well, and, and not to discredit him, but you lose that fear, and you become too comfortable, and you take risks because it hasn't happened to you and it's not going to happen to you, but it does. It's all too real. Mary Lou George continues as a federal mine inspector with the Mine Safety and Health Administration, promoting safety and health awareness in the metal and non-metal mining industry. <laughs>